Good morning. It's time to learn. This is one way we tell time. We also use clocks to tell time and we make sure we're on time to school. So this morning class, I think it's time I look for some mail. Did you notice my flag is up on the mailbox over here? I have some important mail from one of you friends. On the back it says, I love you with a nice heart. I miss every single one of you. <gasps> Look at this. I love getting mail. It says, I love you, Miss Landell. And I love each and every one of you. The person who sent this to me, thank you very much from the very bottom of my heart. We are so blessed to have each other, even if it's just on here for now. So I'm very thankful. And, oh my goodness, there's something else in here. Look at that. She sent me an eraser. How cute. Thank you so much. Well, today is Friday, May 15, 2020. Our wonderful word of the week is mature. Let's say that with me. Mature. Mature has two syllables. Mature. So as you mature, you get older, just like we worked on earlier this week. When you started the school year, you might have looked a little bit like this. And when you're ending the school year, you're going to look bigger. Some ways that we matured this year is we turned five years old. You grew taller. You might have lost a tooth. Speaking of which, one of you I know lost two teeth down here and they grew. Now you have two brand new adult teeth. And your feet have grown. You might be in a new size now. And some of you got glasses like I have for reading. So those are some ways that we mature physically. And when we mature emotionally, that's when sometimes when we get disappointed or sad, we use some of our strategies better, like our belly breathing, our balloon breathing, when we take bunny breaths, when we stop and take a moment to think and relax. Those are some strategies that we use now as we mature. Whenever we get upset or anxious or scared, but as we go back to the word metamorphosis, we've also learned that creatures mature just like the caterpillar becomes a chrysalis and then it becomes a butterfly. And you, my friend, were once, like I was, a baby and you're going to mature and get older. And as you mature, you even act different. Unless you're Miss Lundell, I'm still silly. <laughs> Sometimes our grandmas and grandpas are silly still too. And we've talked about how metamorphosis can happen to frogs too. There's a frog. How did it become a frog? Well, first, it's a baby. And... Then it becomes a tadpole. Some people call them pollywogs. And then there's a froglet with four legs and its tail is still there. Then the tail disappears and it becomes a frog. Like our mature Miss Frida. Oh my goodness, Miss Frida's holding a word. What does that say? Patience begins with a p, -p patience. Patience. As we grow and mature, we have to have patience with each other. Sometimes your mom and dad think, oh, you should act a little more mature than you do. And they have to remember that you're just five. They have more patience for you when you're little. 
versus when you get older and become a teenager. <laughs> so now let's look at our message for today. Our message today begins with a D. Dilly and Dally start with D. Now, I didn't want to dilly dally and write out the whole word and, so I used a little symbol here that can mean the same thing as and. Dilly and Dally start with D. What letter are we talking about today? That's right, D. D, D, D. Now, there is a little turtle in our story that needs some help in the mat mat maturation process and becoming an adult turtle. So we're going to look for the word dilly-dally to try to figure out what the author means in the story. We're also going to look at the life cycle of a turtle as Miss Lundell reads. So let's begin. The title of our story is A Chance for Esperanza. Esperanza is a Spanish word, and we're going to find out what that word means as we read. Esperanza, a chance for Esperanza by Pam Schiller, and the illustrator is Mike Jarowski. Mike Jarowski drew the pictures. Now, do I think that's a true story? I'm wondering if this is fiction or if there's some non if it's non-fiction. Let's see. Let's read and determine if you think this is a true story or if there's elements of fantasy or fiction or something fake in it. A Chance for Esperanza by Pam Schiller. Oh, look it. Aw, what are those? They're baby turtles. Here we go. Abuela, abuela, the sand is cracking. Tonight's the night. Ivan, Ivan, the sand is cracking. Tonight's the night. I wonder what's under the sand. Where are they? They're at the beach, yes. You are right, Austin. Let's go ask everyone to turn their lights out tonight. We want the moonlight over the ocean to be the guiding light for these little guys. Lights on the beach might distract them. And you make sure you have a strong batteries in your flashlight, said Ivan as he patted Austin on the shoulder and winked at Abuela. Abuela. Oh, we know that word from earlier this year. Abuela, Austin said, seriously, I want to hear the story about Esperanza again. It will help me be ready tonight. I'm going to help every little turtle make it to the sea. You have always loved Esperanza's story. I'm happy to tell it to you as often as you like, said Abuela. What a nice Abuela. Before you were born, before your mother and father were married, I came to Kalum to visit your mother. She was working in the dive shop. I fell in love with this village and the people who live here. After the night on the beach where we set the turtles free, I knew I would return again and again. So she likes this place. A long time ago, the turtles swam freely in the ocean. For thousands of years, there were many, many sea turtles. And then people built homes and big hotels on the beaches where the turtles laid their eggs. And the turtles no longer had a safe place for their nests. Oh no, that could be a problem. Soon the number of turtles began to decrease. Oh no, there's not as many turtles there now. There were fewer and fewer turtles in the ocean. I'll start the story, Abuela. You're too slow. Oh no, he's not being patient with his grandmother's storytelling. One night, some mother sea turtles came up on the beach and laid their eggs. Early the next morning, my mother and Ivan worked along the beach looking for tracks and small mounds of sand that would indicate a turtle's nest was buried far below. 
see the voice changed because the child is speaking. The first nest they found had already been robbed by birds and crabs, and there was nothing in it except empty eggshells, but they found another nest that animals had not discovered. You tell the rest, Abuela. All right, dear. Ivan and your mother carefully dug up the eggs, all of them. They put them in a pail. Ivan counted 78 eggs. That's a lot of eggs. Can you count that high? They carried the eggs to Kulum to the turtle nursery. They dug a hole in the protected area. They dug a deeper hole than the mother turtle had dug, and then they buried the eggs. When they were finished, they stuck a stick in the middle of the nest as a marker to help them find the nest later. They wrote the date on the markers so they would know when to expect the babies to hatch. Oh, that is a good idea. See, she's writing the date. They're placing the eggs gently in a new place. Many days later, about 60 in all, the sand around the marker began to crack, and Ivan knew that the baby turtles were hatching and wiggling out of their shells. So 60 days later, they started to hatch. He carefully dug the babies up from their nest and placed them in a box to keep them safe until nightfall. Ooh, I wonder what's gonna happen at nightfall. When the sun went down, you see there's no sun in the sky, is there? It was time to release the turtles. Release means let them go. Ivan told everyone to turn off their lights and come to the beach. You were one of the people on the beach that night, Abuela. Yes, Austin, I went to the beach to watch the baby turtles crawl to the sea. Your mother was there too. It was her job to tell the story of how the mother turtle had laid her eggs and how she and Ivan had reburied them to keep them safe. Your mother told the people to make two lines. You see the two lines of people? So everyone could see the turtles as they made their way to the sea. So she explained that the journey from the box to the ocean was an important part of the release because it helped the turtles develop the rhythm of their crawl and it helped them strengthen their legs. They need strong legs for swimming. My mother let the turtles out of the box, right, Abuela? Right, dear. Your mother released the turtles and Ivan used his flashlight to help guide them to the sea. Some of the turtles went straight to the water, didn't they? Oh yes, yes, I remember that part of the story. Yes, there were some that went straight to the water, but others were confused. They crawled in the wrong direction. Ivan used his flashlight to get them turned around. Look at him using their flashlight. Soon all of the turtles were in the ocean except for one. And you wanted to pick it up and help her, didn't you? I wanted to help her, but Ivan said she had to make it out on her own. He said if she couldn't make it to the water on her own, she would not be strong enough to survive in the ocean. When a turtle didn't make it to the ocean, it was left on the beach. You asked Ivan if you could borrow his flashlight, didn't you, Abuela? Yes, I did. I took the light and put it close to the turtle's eyes. And when I did, I saw that her eyes were crusted over with sand. She couldn't see. So I picked her up and wiped her eyes and put her back down again. And in a short time, she began to move. Soon she began to crawl more quickly and eventually she reached the ocean and swam away, looking just like her brothers and sisters who had gone ahead of her. You wanted to name her Dilly Dally because that's what she had done. She had waited, she had been the last one. But Ivan said you should call her Esperanza, which means hope in Spanish. He said 
if one woman has this much hope for one turtle, there is hope for all the turtles. Aw, oh, that's so nice. That's right, Austin. Ivan and your mother have released many turtles over the years, and without their help, most of the turtles would have died. Tonight, you will help. You will be the hope for the turtles. How exciting. He's going to help the turtles that night. That's the end of our story. So, Esperanza means hope. There was hope for that turtle. They helped that turtle by cleaning cleaning the turtle's eyes off so then he, she could follow the light. So there's always hope, my friends, and we need to make sure that as we make changes that we always have hope. We had to make a change and start learning at home, but there's hope, and I'm so glad that you are going to continue doing your best. So to end our lesson, remember, don't dilly-dally. Dilly-dally starts with D. When you dilly-dally, that means you're waiting too long to get something done that you need to do. And we were waiting on the turtle, Esperanza. She was dilly-dallying because she couldn't see to follow the light. Well, today you're not going to dilly-dally. I want for you to practice by writing your first name on a piece of paper with the best handwriting possible. And then you're going to write this sentence. I know my ABCs. If you notice, you can pause this video and you can go get a piece of paper and a pencil, write your first name, and then write, I know my ABCs. At the end of this year, now that you're more mature and you have learned your ABCs, you can write a full sentence using all the, these amazing letters. I know my ABCs. Now continue learning and have a great day. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>